What up, yogis? My name is Daniel Cumming, and welcome to your flow. So this is the third class in the Ardha Chandrasana progression series towards half moon pose. So if any of this is a little bit strong for you or your body's not used to it, you can always go back to one of the previous two classes and that'll help you progress towards what we're working towards at the moment. So we'll start off in Vajrasana. So have your hips sinking back to your heels. If you need something like a pillow or a bolster or even a block underneath the hips, you can place it there. Also, it will definitely help to have a block handy for this class. So if you have a block or something solid that you can use to maybe just place your hand down during certain poses, that'll be a big help as well. So we'll just start off hands on the thighs, just focusing on the breath. So as you breathe in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils, think about expanding your belly as you breathe. So as you breathe in, belly expands forward and out, feeling full of air like a balloon. And then as you breathe out, lightly draw the belly button in towards the spine, keeping the strong posture, keeping this breath the whole time. As inhale, both arms up and around, palms together, and then exhale down in front of the center. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, both arms up. And then exhale, both hands down in front of the center. Interlace the fingers, elbows rise on the inhale. And then as you exhale, tuck the chin, press through the hands and draw the chest back. Inhale, open up through the shoulders, elbows out to the sides, palms above the head. Good, soften and relax the shoulders. Good. One more breath in, and then exhale, hands in behind the body, interlacing the fingers. Draw the chest forward, arms back. So it looks like this behind the body, fingers interlace. And then as you exhale, bring both hands down in front of the chest. Good. Left hand down to the side. Right foot out to the right. So left hand down, right foot out. Ground down through the pinky toe of the right foot and right hand reaches long. So ground down through the right foot, extend as long as you can through that right hand. Reaching across on top of the body, you can gently peek underneath that right armpit or down towards the left hand. Three more breaths here. Really ground down into that right foot. Last breath in, and then bring the right knee in, swap for the left. So left foot extends out to the side, right hand down, left hand reaches. So rotate that left palm facing down, looking underneath that left armpit, maybe down to the ground, maybe somewhere in between. And don't let the hips slump back too much, but don't also force them too much forward. You want a bit of a balance between the two. And feel like the side ribs are extending and lifting up. One more breath in, and then come back to where we started, back into a Vajrasana position. Good, inhale both arms up, just like we started. Exhale, both palms pressed together, drawing down in front of the chest. Inhale, interlace the fingers differently the last time. So whatever your natural way is, change it around, elbows lift, and then exhale, press away, tuck the chin. This time as we lift up, same as before, but draw the inside of the thighs together, squeeze the legs together. Lifting up the chest, extending the palms up. Good. Ideally, we want the head in between the arms, but if you can't do that, that's fine. Relax the shoulders a little bit. One more breath in. Hands come in behind the body, interlacing the fingers that same different way. Drawing the hands back. Good. Lifting the chest, opening up. Lifting the chin a little bit as well for a little bit of a back bend and an opener. And then gently you can sit back down. Let's go left hand out to the left, right foot out to the right again. This time, right hand reaches up towards the ceiling. And I want you to lift that right foot. You can either keep the right hand in the air or place the right hand on the hip. I want you to just lower on the inhale to the ground and then exhale, bring it up. Two more times. Inhale, lower. Exhale, bring it up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, bring it up. Mix that point and flex. So point the toes, flex the foot and press away from the body. Inhale that right arm up, and then as you exhale, tuck the right knee towards the right elbow. Do this two more times. Inhale, press away. Exhale, draw it in. One more time. Inhale, draw away. Exhale, press it in. Good, swap to the other side. So right hand down, left foot reaches, left arm up, get that side body extension, and then lift the left foot. Left hand on the left hip if you want. Inhale, drop the foot to the ground. Exhale, bring it up. 
two more. Inhale, drop it down. Exhale, bring it up. Inhale, drop it down. Exhale, bring it up. Good. Point, flex. So press strong away from that left with that left foot. Inhale, reach that left arm up. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, press away. Exhale, elbow to knee. One more time. Inhale, press away. And then draw it all in. And let's come to an all fours position. So wrist stack beneath the shoulders, knees stack beneath the hips. Soft through the shoulders, soft through the hips, soft through the head, neck, and face. And just start to make little circles. So just rotating one direction. Pressing into the fingertips as well. So we really want to warm up the wrists here. So pressing into the pinky fingers all the way across to the thumbs. And then as you reverse the rotation, doing the opposite. So pinky of the other hand to the thumbs and then the other hand. So we're pressing all the fingertips like playing keys of a piano. You'll feel it in the wrist. So you can choose how much pressure because you can actually rotate around and have very little pressure on the wrists. But if you want, as you press into the fingertips, you'll feel the different parts of the wrist activating. Good, let's make our way to our first downward dog. So walking the hands forward a little bit, not too far. Lifting the chest, lifting the knees as we tuck the toes, and then looking towards the feet. Let the head hang in between the arms. Drop the weight into the pinky fingers a little bit more. And then open the mouth just for one breath in and out. <sighs> just let everything go. Letting the head nod or shake. Loosening, so you should have a little bit of free movement in the shoulders, so we're not locking them up. And then bend the knees a little bit to start off with and draw the heels back as we feel like we're drawing the chest towards the knees. And then you can just pedal out a little bit, so press into one hand and the opposite heel. So as you press into the right hand, press into the left heel and vice versa. Good, and then you can stretch one leg at a time. So stretch the left leg back, place it down, stretch the right leg back. Place it down, you might get some clicks if it's first thing in the morning. And then lower the knees down. Let's gently lower to the floor. So bring the hands underneath the chest. Tuck the chin, just very slowly lowering all the way down to the belly. Good. Set yourself up for a locust pose position. So nice and long through the body. Tops of the feet to the ground, top of the head forward. Lift the shoulders, draw them back in behind the body. Lift the chest, lift the feet. So open up through the palms and the arms like you're soaring like wings and the top of the head presses forward a little bit good so you can either stay here like this or you can take the backs of the hands to the lower back so you take the back of the hand to the lower back and you just place them in that little hip crease at the lower back you lightly press the hands in and you'll get that extra bit of lift with the chest let's take three breaths here Good, gently release the hands. Frame the chest with the hands, tops of the feet back to the ground, pull the weight back, little to no pressure on the wrists. Inhale, lift the chest, and then exhale back to a Vajrasana position. So sink the hips back towards the heels and then lifting up the chest. Interlace the fingers. So if your wrists get a little bit tender at any time, you can roll them out. So just interlace the fingers and making little figure eights is one thing you can do. Also remember you can place the fists down instead of the hands if you have tender wrists or at any time you can come to the forearms in your downward dog or any other position if you need to take the pressure off the wrist. So just always remember there's always variations you can do. Always feel free to ask questions in the comments if you want any, uh, any particular tips on something that you can't do or you want to maybe try to do a little bit better. So spreading the fingertips, lifting the chest, downward dog again. Have a little pedal out. Let's go inhale, right foot up and back in behind the body, nice and long. So really press through the hands and reach that right foot back. Tuck in the right knee underneath the body, right foot forward for a warrior two position. So that right foot goes in between the hands. Remember you can come onto the fingertips of one hand like this if you need a little bit of help getting the foot through. Rotate the left heel down, and then transfer the weight back into the left heel, left arm back, 
right arm foot. Left arm back, right arm foot. So we want that front set of toes facing directly forward. That back set of toes slightly turn around. As we press into the left heel, you feel that force generating forward and we press backwards with that front foot. Let's take a few fountains. So we exhale, drop the arms. And as you inhale, imagine drawing water up through a straw, tucking the lower belly all the way up, extending up, and then exhale back out, dropping all the way back in. Inhale, press, draw up, and then exhale out, two more. Like sucking water up a straw, up through a fountain, and then expanding out, that's why I call it a fountain. One more time. Inhale, contracting all the muscles, and then exhale, expanding all the muscles, finding that pose. Now, not too far forward, not too far back. We want the chest over the hips. Good, and then just drop the shoulders a little bit. Good, front palm face up, left hand back, right arm up, reverse your warrior. So reach here for two breaths. So relax that right shoulder a little bit and draw down towards the left ankle with the left hand. Don't expect you to reach it or anything, just reaching back. That'll bring that downward force and open up the side body. Now we come, we come, when we come to side angle, don't just lean forward. We press down through the body. We get that same zipping up motion. And then we come up and over. So right elbow, right thigh. Left arm reaches long. So we... Just like we were doing on our knees earlier. As we press down into that foot, that left foot, we extend the left hand long. We rotate the left palm down. And then we can look underneath the armpit or down towards the foot. Also, this, you shouldn't even need it on here. But we want to press it down and open up. But what I mean about not needing it is that if I take it away, see how my body stays in the same spot? Whereas some people, including myself if I get lazy, if we're kind of just leaning in, as soon as that arm goes, the whole posture goes. So we want to use the side, side body strength. Good. Left arm back, straighten that front leg. You can keep a little bend in that front knee. Inhale, reverse, here for two breaths. So reverse trikonasana, reverse triangle pose. So then we come up and over into trikonasana. So we press through, we get the same zipping up and lift, extend up and over. So you can have right hand to the right shin, maybe towards the ankle, maybe the thigh if you need it, or maybe you can place a block here and place the hand on the block. Either way, the left hand lifts up and we get that extension through the side body. As an option here, you can keep the left hand up towards the ceiling, like this, looking up or down, or you can drop the left hand in behind the lower back. So you press lightly into the lower back with the back of the left hand. That actually helps extend the chest up a little bit as well. Two more breaths. Slowly releasing, releasing that back hand if you've got it. Warrior two position. Good, we're gonna add some Tai Chi into it. So left hand, left hip, and then I want you to turn your front palm face up, so right hand, and then as you inhale, turn to face the left and bring your hand with it. And then as you exhale, turn to face the front, bring your hand with it. So it's this big circular motion. So we're making, drawing a big circle with the right hand. So the circle starts in line with the right foot and then it ends in line with the side of the mat if you turn to face the side of the room. Inhale, up and open. Exhale, down and back. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, down and back. So it's this big circular motion. So we've got a big circle drawing with the hand, a littler circle drawing with the elbow, even smaller circle with the shoulder. But the body, the upper body is actually doing the movement for us. One more time. Good, let's reverse. So left hand reaches up and over the body. Left hand back, right arm up, inhale. And then we circle both hands up and over. Take that back heel off, both hands down, step the front foot back, downward dog. Just relax through the shoulders a little bit. Pedal out through the heels. Loosening everything off. Moving however feels good. You can sway the hips from side to side if you'd like. 
and then we'll take those spinal rolls. So we inhale up and forward to a high plank position, press through the fingertips and exhale back. Inhale up and forward, exhale down and back. Inhale up and forward, exhale down and back. Two more. You can slow it down a little bit. That's it, let's take a high plank position. So shoulders stacked over the wrist, pressing into the fingertips. Draw the lower belly in. I always recommend lowering to the knees if you need to, either now or halfway down. Let's take five seconds all the way down to our belly and stop on our belly. Five, four, three, two, one. All the way down. Good, setting yourself up for locusts again. We'll take a break after this. So rolling the shoulders up, back and around. Either palms beside you or hands to the lower back again. Lifting the chest, top of the head, forward, feet back. Four breaths. Good, last breath in. Reaching the hands forward, fold the arms. Forehead or cheek down to the arms and just relax. I'm taking about three or four breaths to relax here. You can sway the hips gently side to side if that feels nice for you. And that's it, slowing everything down. Framing the chest with the hands. Inhale, lift up the chest. Exhale, draw everything back to a child's pose position. So sinking the hips back towards the heels. Knees either close together, far apart, or somewhere in between. And then just loosening off through the shoulders. I like to move a little bit in the postures, especially holding these. But if you want to be a bit more still, that's fine. I'm just focusing on the belly breathing. You just feel like all the joints from the neck, shoulders, wrists, elbows, hips, knees, all just getting a bit more space in them, feeling a bit more soft, relaxed, mobile, spacious. When you're ready, we'll head to a downward dog. So walk the hands forward a little bit, tuck the toes, pressing through the hands. Yeah, and remembering not to lock up the shoulders and arms, just relax them a little bit, press down into the pinky fingers and then the thumbs and the rest of the fingers. And feel like the back of the thighs are pressing and drawing back. Like the back of the thighs here, are pressing to the back of the room and lifting something up. Have a little pedal out. And let's go other side. So we go left foot, lifting up this time. You can come onto the fingertips of the left hand if it allows you a little bit more space for the left foot to come in between the hands. And then right heel rotates back. Right arm back, left arm forward. So left foot facing directly forward, back set of toes, slightly facing around. Turn around so you can see me a bit better. Let's take four fountains. So as we lift up the arms, inhale, exhale, drop them, and inhale, zipping up through center. Exhale, expand out. Good, three more. Inhale, zipping up. Turn everything on, contract, and then exhale, relax and expand. Two more. So we're turning on all the muscles of the pose. Exploring all avenues, all that contraction and holding into center. And then all that expression of the power pressing outwards. One more. Exhale, sink in. Good. Relax the shoulders a little bit. Not too far forward, not too far back. Right arm back and down. Inhale, left palm up. Soften through the shoulders. Two breaths here. Keep that left knee bent. Sinking into the left heel and left pinky toe will help keep that knee stacked over the ankle. Good. 
We'll move towards side angle. So press through the feet, lift up, left elbow down to the left thigh, right arm reaches. Ground down through the right foot and extend that right arm up and over. Good. So feel like that expression of power from the foot extends up through the side body and out through the hand. Pressing down through the left elbow into the left thigh and opening, rotating the ribs open a bit. Good, one more breath in. And then slowly reversing. So anchor that right arm back, straighten that front leg, left arm up, right arm back. Two breaths here. And then up and over, trikonasana. So press through the feet, zip up still, up and over, left hand, left shin, or anywhere that suits, right arm up. Get that lift through the right side ribs. You can drop that right hand in behind the lower back if you did on the other side. About two more breaths. Very slowly, unwinding, bending that left knee, finding your way back to a warrior two position, softening through the shoulders. Right hand, right hip, left palm face up. We inhale, half straighten that front leg, turn towards the right side, and then as you exhale, turn towards the front foot and sweep. So it's this big kind of lifting up and circle around, and it's like brushing something away. So we inhale, lift, holding something above the head, and then we brush it away. Inhale, up and turn. Exhale, brush it away. So there's a Tai Chi movement. So it's good to soften the joints, especially after holding a long pose. It's redistributing the energy, the chi. And it's basically just softening back into all the joints, moving all the joints and the parts of the body at once in one big circular movement. So we're not holding any tension in any particular area at once. Good, one more. Good, circle that left hand up and then the right arm back. And then exhale, both hands up and over. Right hand down, left hand down, left foot back, downward dog. And just pedal it out a little bit again. So just moving side to side with the hips. Moving however feels good. You can stretch out a leg or two. Maybe not at the same time. <laughs> and let's take those spinal rolls. Inhale up and forward. Exhale down and back. Inhale up and forward. Exhale down and back. Nice strong locomotion. I'm going to say like emotion, it's just this train of movement. So as we press, we keep the momentum going the whole time. We never stop moving. Good. Let's take a high plank. Come to the knees if you need to. All the way down, let's take eight seconds this time. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Let's take a cobra. Inhale, lift the chest. Draw the elbows back, not squeezing in. Pour the weight back to the hips. We'll do one more of those, so exhale down. Less in the hands, more in the lower back, even the glutes, get a bit of activation. And then back to a child's pose, take a rest. And just remembering that with the shakes, especially on the way down, all those little muscle shakes, all those little synergistic muscles waking up, all those muscles that don't often get a good go. So shakes aren't weakness, shakes aren't bad means you're getting plenty out of the movement. And once you're ready, you can head back into a Vajrasana position this time. So just sitting in this Vajrasana position, let's roll out the wrists a little bit. 
I just want to give you a few options for side planking, which we'll be using soon in the class. So option one would be the one that we did earlier, right? So we have here, which is completely fine. You can take this as a side plank position when, we, when I say side plank. Otherwise, if you want to start moving towards things, remember that you can always come to the elbows and forearms instead, if it's too much on the wrists. But then you can place one foot in front. Yeah, or behind. Otherwise, you can place that foot down, that bottom foot down, and then do the same thing. One in front or one behind. Yeah, and then you can go one foot stacked on top, and then maybe here, then maybe lifting both feet. So you've always got those options, yeah? So I'll go through them one more time. So we've got here, to here or here, and then to here or here, and to here, and here, and here. Cool. And remember, at any time, you can do the same thing on the forearm if you don't want to use the wrists. Cool. Let's head to downward dog. Have a little pedal out. And this time, I'll get you to, if you have a block, place it at the front of the mat on its high setting here. If you don't, maybe some canned beans or something, just something that gives you a little bit more reach and a target to focus on for your balance. That'll help into your downward dog. Great, inhale, right foot up and back in behind the body, nice and long. Right foot through, warrior two. Left heel down. Zipping up through center, finding a warrior two position. Let's take two fountains. Exhale, drop the arms. Inhale, zip up. Expanding out. One more time. Exhale, drop the arms. Inhale, expanding up. Good. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Right arm up, left arm back. Flowing more a little bit here. So as we exhale, side angle, right elbow, right thigh, left arm reaches nice and long. Good, keeping it moving. Inhale, reverse, straighten the front leg, trick and after. Same flow as before, but a little bit faster. Good, and then this, we come through this time. Instead of going for a trick and asana, bend the right knee. I want you to draw a line with your hand from your leg down your foot towards the block. So it's like this target, and we go for the block. So we'll just do a practice run. So I want you to inhale, lift, reverse your warrior, and then as you exhale, draw a line. Place the right hand to the floor, maybe a block. Lift the left foot back, left hand up. And then as you do it, just find a way to land safely. Yeah, we'll do that one more time. So inhale, reverse. Exhale, shoot. And then as you lift the left foot and left hand, inhale again, and then just breathe regularly. And you can fall and wobble as many times as you want. When you're ready, on this third one, let's try to hold it. Inhale, reverse. And then exhale. Go for it. So right hand down st stabilizes you. Press into the big toe of the right foot and the pinky toe of the right foot, and then the heel of the right foot. Left hand reaches nice and high and left foot extends out behind you. So find that mix between pointing the toes, flexing the foot, and the key is to keep the chest facing the side of the room. So we don't wanna go chest facing down. That's gonna throw off our whole pose. So we wanna open up through the hips, left hip stacked on top of right, left side of the mouth lifting up into a little bit of a smile, just a little bit. Good, one more breath in, and then exiting the pose, nice work. Let's start moving, so left hand, left hip, inhale up and turn to the left, exhale down and foot. So the key is to keep moving so that tension doesn't stay in the body when moving. So it's soft, so all your joints are soft. So the wrists are really soft and gentle. Fingertips feel like they're moving through water. And slowing down the breath. Good, and you'll be able to feel it. It's just starting to soften all the joints. Only that tension that we just created, dissipating it a little bit. Good, bring that. Left hand forward, circle it up and over. Inhale the right arm up. And then both hands all the way down. Stepping the front foot back, down the dog. 
good options here. So you can take those spinal rolls if you want. You can take that plank all the way down to your belly. Otherwise, let's take a side plank on both sides. So we'll start off with the right side. So rotate the right heel down and right hand stays down. You can place the left foot in front or behind and then choose your side plank. Just be here for about two or three breaths. Lifting up the side ribs, active. And then when you're ready, exhale, swapping back through center. So draw the lower belly in to protect the lower back, swapping to the left side. So left hand down, add a blade to the left foot. Maybe the right foot in front or behind, maybe stacked. Good. One more breath in. And then coming back down with dog. And just find your way down to Vajrasana. You just have a little bit of a rest. Slowing everything down. You can roll out the wrists if you like. Another little wrist roll. Can be thumbs, pointer fingers, pinky fingers. Roll. Thumbs, pointers, pinkies. Roll around. Thumbs, pointers, pinkies, roll around. Thumbs, pointers, pinkies. If you can't get it, don't worry. Just roll the wrists. Roll the shoulders, loosening everything off. Shake it off. Nice work. Let's go back, downward dog. Have a little pedal out, feel out your downward dog. So downward dog's a little check-in, seeing how your body feels differently throughout each sequence, just checking in how you're feeling, any stories are coming up around, what your mind's doing, and just dropping back into your breath. That's the most important part. You got it. Inhale, left foot up, in behind, left foot through warrior two. So right heel rotates down, right arm back, left arm forward. Good, make sure you have your block handy if you have it. Two fountains, exhale, drop the arms. Inhale, zip up through center. Exhale, expand out. Inhale, draw in. Exhale, expand. Good, sink into your posture. Right arm back, inhale, left arm up. Nice and long, keep the left knee bent. Press through the feet, up and over, side angle. So left elbow down, actively pressing down to the thigh, right arm reaches. Good, transferring the weight back, right heel. Inhale, straighten that front leg. You know where we're going now. So elbow, left elbow down, lining up with that left thigh, drawing that line straight for the block. You can pick up the block and move it if you need to. You can start off with the right hand on the right hip or maybe extending straight up. And again, I know it feels vulnerable to open up the chest to the side because it feels like we could always fall back. But if that's what you're scared of doing, then fall back. This is an opportunity for the first couple to, to fail at it. Fail, yeah? So get those fears out of the way of falling or failing and what might happen if you go too far forward or too far back and then exploring those, those zones that we can fall out of just so you feel safe to fall out and then you go for it when you're ready. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. So right arm up, left foot pressing down, left hand down and right foot pointing. So point flex, extend. So it should feel strong with the right foot pressing back. And I like to think of like a bed sheet. So we're spreading the bed sheet out in all directions so it doesn't go all floppy. And it's much easier if we stretch it out to keep control of it. If you know what I mean. Good. One more breath. And then like a ninja landing that right foot perfectly as always. <laughs> Imperfectly, perfectly. And let's move. So right hand, right hip. Inhale, up and away. Exhale, move with this Tai Chi flow. Inhale, up and away, turn to the right. Exhale, down, turn to the left foot. Inhale, turn to the right. Exhale, turn to the left. Good. Relaxing the shoulders, the wrists, the ankles and toes. And the whole body is just moving softly, slowly, through water. And 
that's it. Good, this time bring the right hand with you, so both hands forward. Circle that right arm up and over the body, left palm up. Inhale and then exhale, circle both hands down. Step the left foot back, down with dog. Good, so let's go side plank again. Otherwise, always willing to take, always fine to take those other options. Another option is always just come down to child's pose and resting through this sequence, if that, that's better for you. So it starts with the left side this time. So roll to the left hand, left blade of the foot, right arm up. And then you can take whatever variation feels good for you. And on the exhale, rotating to the other side. Good, taking that same position, other side. So right hand down, right foot down. One more breath in, and use the exhale to rotate. Good, and then just lower down to the knees. Lower down to your Vajrasana, rolling out the wrists. See the figure eights with the fingers interlaced. But even when you do figure eights, don't squeeze the fists. You want to be pretty loose. Good. Dissipate any heat you've created. Two breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Breathe in, out through the mouth. One more, tongue out, no one can see you. Nice work. Good, just take a little moment to rest, just returning to your breath, moving, rolling the shoulders, just checking in with your body. Good, when you're ready, let's go back to downward dog. And we're just gonna practice that move one more time. We're gonna go out of change asana. One more time each side, working towards holding it for a bit longer. And just finding what works with it as well. So inhale, right foot up and back, nice and long. Right foot through, warrior two, one fountain this time. So finding your way up, don't need to rush. Make sure you, st st even though we're moving into another pose, it's important that the pose before it is done properly because it's all about transitions as well. So if that front foot is not facing forward, we're gonna set ourselves up for a, uh, an angle that won't be ideal. So strong through the posture first. Good, inhale reverse. Let's go straight into it, Ardha Chandrasana. So right hand down towards the floor or the block. So if you, if you don't know what I mean by the floor, you can avoid the block entirely and reach down towards the floor. I prefer the block. And depending on your arm length, you'll find something that works for you as well. So let's reach up, left hand to the ceiling, left foot back. Good, you can always place the left hand on the hip, but I would definitely advise reaching up with the left hand. It feels more vulnerable, but the more you reach up and the more you imagine that you're holding something on, holding on to something on the ceiling or reaching at least, you get a bit more stability. So don't forget about that right foot, pressing down through the right foot, pressing back with the left, down with the right hand. <laughs> Losing your balance or not, doesn't matter. It's all part of the process. And then top of the head out forward. One or two more breaths, as long as you want to hold it here. It's up to you, this is the last time you're doing it this side. Good, and then float that left foot back. Good, this time let's take both hands. So inhale up and away, just take both hands behind you, and then exhale them forward. Inhale, big circle with the arms, exhale, forward. Two more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Circle the hands, so left arm back, right arm up. And then circle both hands up and over, step the right foot back, down the dog. Let's just take a plank all the way down to the floor. So inhale, up and forward, tuck the chin, look between the hands, lower down nice and slow, all the way down. Let's take your cobra, so draw the elbows back. Inhale, tops of the feet to the ground. Exhale, child's pose, one or two breaths here. And then finding your way back to downward dog in a breath or two. Just a little check in. 
Good. Back to downward dog if you haven't made it there yet. Last standing sequence. From downward dog, inhale the left foot up and back, nice and long. Left knee underneath the body, left foot forward. Warrior two. Right heel down. Make sure you set up your stance. Strong into that back heel. Not too long, not too short. Just right. Fountain. Exhale, drop the arms. Inhale, expanding up and out. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Left arm up, right arm back. And then Ardha Chandrasana. So left hand towards the block or the ground. Right foot lifts up. And extending that right hand up. Open up, keep that right hip open, keep the chest facing the side of the room. Avoid the urge to turn the chest down towards the ground too much. I know it feels open and vulnerable. It's part of this pose. But you can find that stability within the vulnerability there. And it's actually that openness that provides the stacking and provides the ease for the actual body parts here. So if you're getting a bit more used to it now, you can maybe, if you're using a block especially, instead of dumping into your wrist, so pressing your left hand all the way down to the wrist, so you can come onto the finger pads or fingertips a bit more. Because eventually we can take the block completely away. Which in the next series we will. The next class of the series. So you can get one or two more breaths. When you're ready, landing that right foot. Good, keep it moving. Inhale both arms up and back. Exhale down and forward. Inhale up. Exhale back. So this is a big circular motion, movement, really good for the shoulders and hips. In through the nose, out through the mouth. One more time. Let it go. Good. Circle that right arm up and over the body, left arm up. Inhale and then exhale. Circle both hands. Step the left foot back, down with dog. Let's go, one more little vinyasa flow. So we inhale up and forward, high plank, lowering all the way down. Let's take seven seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two, one. Down, always save a little bit. Elbows back, inhale, lift the chest. Good, stay here for another one or two breaths. Just stretching out the body. Dropping the elbows down a little bit. That's it, slow it all down. And coming down to a child's pose. I'm just spending a few breaths here. Just relaxing in. Good work. I'm just going to wind everything down now. And we'll make our way towards pigeon pose. So, from downward dog, inhale right foot up and back, and then right knee to the outside of that right wrist. Yeah, so if you can see, the knee isn't in front of the hips, it's outside of the hips. Right foot is creeping forward a little bit. As we flex the right foot and press down through the right foot, we get this extra little bit of lift. And then as we exhale, we can soften down into the posture. Relax the shoulders. So this reminder that, especially with these progression series, with the classes like this one that are a bit later in the series, I won't re-explain things as detailed with certain poses. So you can just do your best, and I will will explain a little bit, but if you want more detailed explanations of certain poses, you'll probably find them in the earlier classes of this series. So the playlist is available if you want to have a look. Just slowing down the breath, focusing the breath more into the belly than the chest. About two more breaths here. And then what we'll do is lean towards the right hip. Sweep that left leg around. So placing the left foot to the outside of the right thigh. So 
as a level one, you can straighten that right foot and flex the toes towards you. The left foot will be on the outside of that right leg and lifting up the chest. If you want more from this pose, you can bend the right knee and you'll get more of a stretch out of it. But if your hip is off, your left hip is off and not on the ground, then you're probably better off straightening that leg. Either way, inhale both arms up, exhale, coil the right arm around and then left hand is close to that left hip. So right foot forward, so right foot is straight or bent around, left foot is over the right leg and right arm is around the right knee. Good, one more breath in, extending up through the top of the head, and then exhale, release. We'll then place, I'll face you so you can see, place your left foot to the inside of the right thigh. So, left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Lifting up, make sure you're grounded down the hips, we lift up the chest. It's not about reaching the toes, it's not about folding in half, it's more about this length up and over. So I want you to inhale, lift the chest, you can bend that right knee a little bit if you want. And then think more of the chest coming up and over towards the ankle or the toes. So we're keeping this length through the spine, not folding in half. If you're super flexible, feel free to go with whatever feels good for you. But I would recommend keeping that elevation of the chest and the top of the head. Just two or three more breaths. Won't be here for too long. Keep the hips grounded. Good, slowly pouring the weight back to the hips and we'll swap sides. So exact same pose, other side. So left leg straight, right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Remember that front leg doesn't need to be necessarily fully straight. You can bend the knee a little bit, press down through the heel into the ground, flex the toes towards you. Inhale, lift, and then exhale up and over towards that front foot, long through the spine and make sure the hips are grounded. Nice big belly breaths, slowing down the breath. Good, one more breath in. And then walking the hands back towards the body. So then we'll turn that into a twist. So we have the right foot lifting up and over, pressing down into the ground. So left leg is still straight, right leg lifts up and over the body, and then we lift up the chest. We inhale both arms up, and then as we exhale, we coil that left arm around the right knee, and then right hand is in behind. So left arm around the right knee, right hand is in behind, and just looking gently over that right shoulder. So we're not twisting 100%, maybe 60, 70% maximum. Not forcing the twists. Nice big belly breaths. One more breath in. Exhale, releasing. Let's right, set up for pigeon pose. So bending the left knee this time. So bending the left knee and flexing the left foot. So you'll see from front on, but you can see that, that the left knee is bent. It doesn't have to be a perfect 90 degree angle, but flex the foot. And so the hip, the knee is outside of the hip. So then when I lower down, the hips have somewhere to go. So we point that right foot back, pointing the toes, inhale, lift up, and then exhale, softening down, softening in. Slowing down the breath.
that one or two more breaths. And then when you're ready, you can lean towards the left hip, sweep both feet forward, and then we'll come onto our back. So as you roll onto your back, tuck your knees in towards your belly, knees together, and just little circles. So just tiny little circles, massaging your lower back into the floor. Then reversing that direction. And then separating the knees. So one hand each knee, opening up the legs and then rotating the knees around, making sure that the shoulders rotate with them as well. So the knees are rotating in circles in opposite directions and the shoulders are just kind of riding that movement. Then reversing the direction, so rotating knees in the opposite way, shoulders in the opposite way, and keeping the head nice and long, neck and head nice and long away from the shoulders, not hunching up too much. Good, let's stretch out the left leg, right knee towards you, and then towards that right armpit. So left foot pressing away, right knee towards the right armpit. Again, not, not forcing maybe 50, 60%. It's really not an intense stretch. You don't want to pinch on that hip. It's just giving you a bit of a length. And then swapping sides. So right leg straight and extended, left knee towards the chest, and then left knee towards the left armpit. Big breath into the belly and out of the belly. Both feet down to the floor, knees together. Open up the arms, either to cactus arms or straighten them if you've got room. And then just gently swaying the hips from side to side, just losing everything off. Very gently, just swaying the hips. And let's take a few bridges. So placing the feet down close enough to the hips that you might be able to touch them with the hands. Shoulders relaxed down. Press into the feet, press into the shoulders and the arms. No weight in the neck or the head, lifting up the hips. And then exhale, lower them down. Inhale, rolling up tailbone to the ribs. And then exhale down. So you continue this motion for three more breaths, up and down. Otherwise, you might just want to hold it. So you can hold up. The position or maybe even stack the hands underneath the hips elbows down and just holding the position nice big breath and expansion good lowering down the hips so you can stay in this bridge position or you can take Bhadakanasana to finish off so soles of the feet together knees open and apart Depending on how intense you want the stretch, further away the feet are from the hips, the less intense it should be. So just finding the stillness here, just for a few breaths. Letting the inside of the thigh stretch. You can maybe palm the upper thighs where the hip crease is and that'll give you a little bit of a massage. You might not feel much or you might feel a lot depending on how tight your hips are. You can Always recommend self-massage. You can just, you know, just feeling into your muscles and feeling what feels good and what helps. You can get to know your body a lot by doing that. And then when you're ready, you can bring the knees together, stretch out both legs long. Take a well-earned Shavasana, so legs however you want them to be. Arms however you want them to be. Get out any last stretches, any wiggles, any yawns. And then just start to focus on the breath. Just gently noticing the breath moving in and out the nostrils. So as you inhale, expanding the belly, filling it full of air like a balloon. And then as you exhale, the belly drops and softens, just letting go of any tension. Two more of these. Nice big breath in. Any tension completely dissipating as you let go. 
One more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Nice big breath in. Let it all go. That's it. And just completely surrender into the floor, into the earth. And letting the earth beneath you support you. And just letting everything trickle away. And your entire body becoming soft and weightless. All the way from the feet up the back of the heels, up the back of the legs, all the way up behind the hips and lower back, up behind the shoulders, gently, softly moving, up the back of the neck, up the back of the head to the crown of the head, and then softly trickling over the forehead and eyebrows, around the temples, down the front of the nose to the top lip, around the cheeks to the bottom lip, Feeling your whole jaw soften and relax. Noticing more space between the teeth and the tongue. That's it. The neck, throat relaxed and the shoulders just melting down into the floor. As you feel this soothing sensation wash over the arms, down the wrists, hands and fingertips. The same soothing sensation washes over your chest, ribs, belly, hips, thighs, knees, shins, ankles and toes, until it just rests for a moment at the soles of your feet, just feeling it now at the soles of your feet, that's it, and you can feel this sensation develop your whole body now, Supporting you as you float here, weightless in space. And that's it. And you can just completely let go. And there's nothing left you need to do.
ready. No rush. You can start to bring your attention back to your breath, deepening the breath in and out the nostrils as you expand the belly on the inhale. And let it fall on the exhale. Beginning to reawaken the body by brushing the thumbs over the fingertips. And wiggling the toes. And nodding the head gently from side to side. And gently moving the wrists and the ankles. And just starting to move however feels good for you and your body. Eventually, taking a nice big stretch overhead with the arms, a nice big breath in, a little grin, and then bending the knees, rolling over to one side, head resting on the arm. When you're ready, you can find your way to a seated position. Finish off with three breaths, each breath in, taking both hands up above the head. And as palms connect, exhale down through center, brushing the thumbs over the forehead, nose, lips, chin, the backs of the hands against the thighs. Just noticing every little sensation. Just noticing how much more aware you are of every little sensation and how different you feel now as opposed to when you started the class. We'll rest the palms in front of the chest and to finish off, we'll take a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth together. Taking our breath in together now. Nice work. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon. Namaste.